We're continuing our studies in Chapter 18 on nitrogen metabolism, and in this lesson we'll be looking at the synthesis of essential amino acids. Remember, these are amino acids that we must take into our diet or must be supplied by bacteria in the gut because we can't synthesize them for ourselves. Let's look first at the synthesis of cysteine and methionine in bacterial systems. And that's illustrated in our figure here. They begin with the amino acid serine. An acetyl group is added from acetyl-CoA to form O-acetylserine. And then that acetyl group is exchanged for a sulfide ion highlighted in brown here. And that forms the amino acid cysteine. So in other words, bacteria can directly incorporate sulfide ion. Mammals cannot do this. To make the amino acid methionine, they begin with cysteine. That becomes, we add an extra methylene group to form homocysteine, and then that becomes methylated on that side chain to form methionine. You'll notice in this case, the carrier of that methyl group is that very important cofactor, tetrahydrofolate. So this is how bacteria synthesize cysteine and methionine. Again, we do not carry out these processes as mammals. Instead, we can make cysteine, but we must have methionine supplied. We cannot make that for ourselves. And a reaction somewhat the reverse of what we just saw, we can start with the amino acid methylene, uh, methionine, demethylate that to form homocysteine. We're going to combine that, as illustrated on the bottom left here, with serine, and that will form cysteine. In other words, homocysteine is the donor for the sulfhydryl group that gets added to the side chain of serine and thereby forms cysteine. In the process, you'll notice that homocysteine also becomes deaminated. There's our ammonia group coming off, and it, we form alpha-ketobutyrate. The things to remember here is that methionine becomes demethylated to form homocysteine, which is our sulfhydryl donor added to serine to form cysteine. So again, cysteine is a non-essential amino acid, but we have to have the essential amino acid methionine in order to make it. Plants and bacteria are able to synthesize aromatics, and the beginning of that process is illustrated here. They start with phosphoenol pyruvate and erythrose 4 phosphate. They combine with that another molecule of phosphoenol pyruvate and form a long, long hydrocarbon chain that's folded up to form the ring structure, and our inter the intermediate is chorismate. From this intermediate, bacteria and plants can make each of the three aromatics, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. What you need to remember is just that each of these three aromatics, uh, the precursor is chorismate, and this is only in plants and bacteria. Of course, we cannot make, as mammals, phenylalanine or tryptophan, but we can make tyrosine. However, in order to make tyrosine, we have to have the essential amino acid, phenylalanine, and that simple reaction is illustrated here. A hydroxyl group is added to the pair position of phenylalanine to form tyrosine. So again, although tyrosine is a non-essential amino acid, we have to have the essential amino acid, phenylalanine, in order to form it. We're just going to look at the synthesis of one more essential. Again, this is something plants and bacteria do, mammals cannot do. It's unusual. All other of the 19 common amino acids are synthesized from intermediates of pathways related to carbohydrate metabolism. This one is not. It's a kind of a cut and paste from multiple molecules, including ATP, glutamate, glutamine, and 5-phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, or PRPP. The, the atoms that contribute to form that histidine amino acid are highlighted as far as their donor molecules. So here we have a CN in purple from ATP. Here it is in the imidazole ring of histidine. From PRPP, you can see the carbon backbone highlighted in blue, and that forms much of the carbon backbone here highlighted in blue in histidine. There's an amine group in the imidazole ring of histidine, as well as the alpha amine group, and those nitrogens come from glutamine and glutamate. So very unusual synthesis. All you need to remember is why it is unusual, because it is kind of a cut and paste, and it doesn't come from intermediates of carbohydrate metabolism. 
In our next video lesson, we'll see how neurotransmitters can be synthesized from amino acids. And in particular, we'll look at our gene and a very special kind of neurotransmitter that is synthesized from that amino acid.